So, welcome to Hollywood and Sip, as we're now calling it. I am your host, Kat Smith, and with me today is Ethan Cohen, also known as E Money. And how you doing? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. I've heard great things about the one and only Cat. Oh. It was <laughs> one of my one of my dreams to do an interview with you since back when I worked at Train Town with uh, a Matt. Guy, I th- Matt. Matt, you know yeah. Matt. You guys have DJ together. Right? Yeah, we had a karaoke business together. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. that's that's awesome. So <laughs> yeah, that's how I first heard about you, and I'm I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So you graduated from Sonoma Valley High School in 2009. Did you grow up your whole life here? Did you move into Sonoma? Yeah, no, my whole life. I mean, the first 12 years of my life was in Agua Caliente. um, And then we moved to the east side of Sonoma. But yeah, pretty much just a Sonoma kid born and raised. I didn't know that there was life outside of vineyards and wineries. I thought the whole world was like that. And then uh, you, you leave it and you, you you just take for granted the beauty of Sonoma, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, I'm happy to be born and raised here, though, for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I have a similar experience because I moved to San Diego for five years. And, you know, as a kid, I was like, I hate it. I want to get out of here. And then as soon as I was down there and I was visiting back up here as an adult, I'm like, this place is amazing. And now I'm so happy I moved back. Oh yeah, it's the, you don't really enjoy it until you live somewhere else. Yeah, and uh, then you come back because, like a lot of people who have never left Sonoma, they're not they they all just they don't seem happy, you know. Yeah, I, um, really started to fall in love with Sonoma after I moved out of Sonoma, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I found you in an article in the Sonoma Index Tribune recently because of your new album. And um, you talk about the power of yes. What is the power of yes? <laughs> well, the power of yes is just being open to any opportunity. You know, I just believe in the universe. And, you know, I work in the business and in, in television casting where, like, I'm constantly, you know, providing opportunities to people and I'm getting told no all the time and people are always giving me like oh it just doesn't seem right for my brand and I don't know if it's a good but it's like for me I just if somebody like goes out of their way and thinks that I'd be good for something I know that there's always a way that I can make that opportunity beneficial for me because all that matters because life's all about experiences like when I die I want to have a thick book with many chapters in it. And everything you say yes to is just another chapter to add on. So that's what I, I learned in like this, this stupid reality show that I was on, which was, it was miserable, but I'm glad I did it because like not many people could say that they've done reality TV and I just grew so much and I have so many just insane memories. So it's all about just, you know, building up your, your memory portfolio. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. It was MTV's uh, sixth season of, what is it, Are You the One? Um, yeah. Was what it. was that show? Because I've never seen it. And what was your experience like? Because I, I heard you were pretty miserable. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen it because you're an intelligent person. Who's like, good content. <laughs> no, um, uh, one second. So, okay. So, um, yeah. So, the uh, you know, the uh, the show Are You the One was basically there's there's 11 22 people 11 guys 11 girls and they're trapped in like a mansion um for 30 days and and the goal of the show is to find your perfect match there's a girl in the house who's your perfect match and then you play different games and and try to find who it is and then if you could all if you all find who your you know respective perfect matches are then you get to split a million dollars so lucky enough we all found our perfect matches. I got a nice paycheck and uh, was able to travel to Vietnam and go on a cross country road trip and do wild things for six months of my life. I probably should have been smarter with my money, but I blew that. <laughs> I blew it right away. But um, yeah, I mean, and it was just the reason the show was miserable was because like I, I figured out the first day that the reason they threw me in there was just to provide comic relief and to be the the more relatable guy rather than being a guy who actually has a chance with any of these beautiful women I mean I didn't get any time of day with the women and then I would get yelled at for not trying to find my match but it's like nobody wants to talk to me man they have 21 year old Instagram models and then me and I'm not saying I'm an ugly dude but I'm no Instagram model you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that that was that's what was tough uh, for me so but you know, I we made it work, and uh, and it was it was definitely fun. It was way more fun for people to watch the show than for me to actually be on the show. I'll say that much. <laughs> so you had to find your perfect match by the end. So 
is that perfect match still with you or was it a perfect match? <laughs> uh, let's just see that. If, you know, in, in Hollywood, anything could be spun the whatever way it was. Like I found my perfect match and we, it was funny because that was the one girl who I literally didn't have one conversation with until the very end when they were like, just so you know, this is probably your perfect match. So the producers were like, you have to, we can't have a show where you, we don't show you talking to your perfect match. So just give me one conversation with her <laughs> for one hour. Just be into it. Pretend you guys are hitting it off. And then they edited it and then they made it seem like we were falling for each other, which anybody who would, with any right mind knew that that was not true. But you know what? She's a good girl. And um, um, I wish her nothing but the best. It's such a fun story. I love that you did that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was good. I'm glad I did. Um, and another fun story. I love how you got your name E-Money. Can you tell us the story of how you chose E-Money? Yeah, back when I was uh, living in Agua Caliente, I would just be playing basketball all the time. And, you know, my name's Ethan. So that's where the E in the E-Money comes from. Um, and then the money came from because I would just be shooting hoops. And I think there was one day where I was just drilling everything. I, I really don't remember it, but this is a story that I'm going to stick by. <laughs> I, would, I just remember like, uh, like my next door neighbor who was a car salesman, really just awesome dude, Joe Camilleri. He would always see me shooting hoops and he'd be like, look at that baby Shaq Diesel. He would always have like new nicknames for me whenever he would see me shooting hoops. And then one day I was just drilling him and he's like, that's money. I'm going to call you E-Money. And then everybody just, like thought it was hilarious, E-Money. And then it just kind of stuck with me as a nickname. And then when I started rapping in seventh grade, they were like, what should we call you? And we we're like, let's just call you E-Money. And uh, because, because of that story. So um, that's pretty much why, you know, and it's here I am 29 years old and people on the internet know me as E-Money. That's so cool. Yeah. And it's, it's all back to seventh grade. <laughs> exactly. So speaking of which, so the album that's coming out now is your fifth. Um, was your first one while you were still in high school? Yeah, the first one I made, um, I made, uh, I released it the summer after I graduated from high school and then sold it out of a shoebox at the, at the farmer's market. Not many people purchased it, but if you're watching this and you purchased one of my, my first album, I will remember you forever. You will always have a fond place in my heart. But yeah, that was, and pretty much that album was just songs that I made my whole high school tenure. It was like 15 songs um, and then, you know, released it. And that was back before Spot. It was just like MySpace was the thing, but like people still had hard copies of albums. People still wanted to buy them. So I just burnt them on a CD and, uh, pretty much just sold them probably sold like 10 and then um that was that was that you know i i don't have any copies left but i really want to find one i love that you sold it at the farmer's market because i think people in the rest of the world they don't understand how great sonoma valley's farmer's market is it's a uh, whole unique thing i've never seen anything like it anywhere else mm, exactly you see people uh and everybody's just happy to see you. Like there's different, like when you go to Sonoma Market, you're not really there to socialize. You're there to, to just buy what you need to buy. So sometimes it's like, oh God, I ran into this person. I'd be rude to not have a conversation, but I don't want to have a conversation. I'm here to buy salad or whatever. So that's, but like at the farmer's market, you, you go there and you sign up to socialize. So every person, and you know, you might be drinking some wine, so you might be feeling in the mood to socialize. And it's just cool seeing everybody kind of like the, the community come together. And I think that's the hardest part of this whole coronavirus is no farmer's markets. You know, that's, uh, that's rough. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we were, we were about to start festival season. So, you know, like um, the film festival was just about to hit and mm -hmm. then uh, farmer's markets were just about to start. We canceled the 4th of July, which Sonoma has an epic 4th of July celebration. So, yeah, yeah. that's the, that's the worst part of it. So, uh -huh. No socializing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's tough. When you were um, growing up and starting to rap, did you have, um, I want to say influences? Mm -hmm. were, there, were there influencers in that for you? Absolutely. You know, it's funny because like anybody who's, who starts to get into rap, you just listen to what's on the radio. So when I first started to get into it, it was Dr. Dre, it was Eminem, it was that whole, and then it was, you know, Jay-Z. 
and you don't even uh, you don't even know that there's a whole different world of like underground hip hop. There's so many rappers out there that aren't on the radio that are amazing. So I got into hip hop just by you know listening to Eminem, of course. But then I actually fell in love with it when like my older sister, I think this dude who had a crush on my older sister who just wanted to impress her, burnt a CD for her, and it was all like underground, like a tribe called Quest common like really like native tongue hip-hop that you have to like search for they're not just gonna shove it down your throat you know so then i i heard that album and i was like i'll never forget like the feeling i felt when i first heard like common and uh and like most deaf i don't know if you know those yeah. those type of artists yeah. and uh that's what really and then jurassic five that was another like huge influence so that's what made me really want to like uh do it because when you're only listening to people on the radio, you're just like, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not a thug. I'm not like a white trash like Eminem. But then when you hear like rappers who are rapping about everyday things, um, then you're like, wow, maybe, maybe I could rap about, you know, my life in Sonoma and maybe there are people that will listen to it. So uh, that was like the big inspiration was like the underground hip hop. And then how do you describe your style? Because I think you're, you're a bit unique. I don't think I can say um, he's just like this guy. He's, you're not right. just like that guy. How do you describe it? That's a, good, that's a really good question. I appreciate you saying that I'm unique because so many people want to compare me. I mean, that's the thing. When you're an artist, you just get compared to other artists. So some people compare me to Mac Miller. Some people compare me to Lil Dicky. I basically get compared to every white rapper who's ever been a, a thing. But like, as far as my style, it's like, it's, it's just very like honest and it's, um, it's humble and it's, uh, I don't, it's very like non braggadocious and it's like, it's melodic too. And it's like feel good music. Like my goal when I'm making music is like, I want people to hear it and I want it to put them in a better mood. Or I want them to feel less alone. I'm not, I don't make the type of music that you play in a club and turn up to and take shots to you know yeah. I make music that you just listen to with your friends and feel good like barbecue music I guess summer road trip music you know that's what that's what I'm that's what I'm kind of going towards and your new album is called everything is fine and it's dedicated to somebody do you want to tell us that story yeah for sure so um in the are you the one house our uh one of my good friends, Alexis Eddy, she was like the only girl who ever made eye contact with me. We had a we had a pact every because we both were going insane in the house. We had a pact that every twenty minute every day for twenty minutes we would have a heart to heart talk and keep each other sane. And that's how I stayed sane in the house was through her, Alexis Eddy. And then after the show, we were just like super close talking all the time. Um, and then she, you know, tra uh, tragically passed away. January of this year which was pretty rough to go through for everybody uh, for that season it was just kind of like it was shocking and it was just weird to like the way I found out that she died because TMZ messaged me which is like why is TMZ messaging me and then they're like oh your friend passed away I'm like damn you got you guys are on you guys are like I don't know how they get news that fast it's just insane but uh so then so then I called it everything is fine because like Alexis was just going through it in the house like everyone else and she would just walk around and she would say everything is fine this is fine everything is fine and that was like her catchphrase so it's kind of like it's dedicated to her but it's also like a product of the times everything that's going on around us I feel like if you just tell yourself that everything is fine even when it's not fine things start to magically become fine and uh that's that's what uh that's pretty much, you know, the theme of the, of the whole project. What a wonderful tribute. And um, I don't want to make light of that, but um, I was thinking in my head mm -hmm. that I'm always so upset when I find out on Facebook that somebody I know died. Like I, yeah. I want the phone call or something, and then you see mm -hmm. it on Facebook. I was thinking, what a weird world to hear from TMZ, though. Oh, it was so, so weird. And, well, yeah, it was the weirdest thing about it is, like, the day before she passed away, we were, we hadn't talked for like two, three months. And then we finally reconnected, like magically reconnected. Um, and we were texting with each other and she told me about how like, so how um, sobriety had been for her and how she like turned her life around. And it was like the first conversation I'd ever had with her where I was like, I was, I was like, wow, this girl is really on the right track and I'm, I'm happy for her. Cause every, she, she has her demons, you know? And then um, it was just so weird because then the next morning TMZ messages me and says, uh, 
um, hey, you, you need to call right away. I have questions. It's about your friend Alexis Eddie. And I was like, oh, God, what did Alexis do this time? Did she get knocked up? Did she? But then yeah. they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. She passed away. So that was weird. And then all the articles that they wrote, um, like every news media, it's just weird when like your friend passes away who's kind of like a public figure because uh, there's just all this stuff that's said about her on, on the internet and then it becomes um, just a lot of people hit me up and it was, it was just like pretty overwhelming. Yeah. Well, uh, thinking about that, um, you know, everybody has opinions about um, not necessarily celebrities, but people in the limelight. So what's mm -hmm. one thing you want people to remember about her that you know is true? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Um, you know, just that she was the, the one of the best humans that I've ever met. And when I say human, I meant that she was a total emp empath or is it empath or empath, empath, empath. 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 Yeah. Like she really, uh, she felt all the feelings and she knew that if you weren't in a good mood, she, she wanted to sit next. She just wanted to sit by you and do whatever she could to, to put you in a better mood. She, uh, she really like cared about other other humans and uh it's it's sad that it's always the good ones that have to pass early but i'm just you know i gotta look at it uh as a way like i gotta look at it from a positive standpoint and say i'm just glad that somebody that amazing was in my life to begin with you know yeah that's amazing so mm -hmm. everything is fine what are some of the stories in your songs on this album that's a, uh some of the stories um you know like a lot of it has to do with love and like different relationships that I had found my found myself in. There was one uh, relation, one like short term relationship that I was in in Sonoma County. We actually met at McGuire's in Petaluma and um, at karaoke night. And she was <laughs> and she sang Janis Joplin, "Take Another Piece of My Heart." And I, she did, she took my whole heart with that performance. And then I went up and performed, and it was like a Star Is Born with like Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we, we had a short little fling and then be, because of the distance, it couldn't really work out. So one of the songs was dedicated to her. Another song was dedicated to a woman that I, a girl that I dated in LA. So like, a few, yeah, like two songs. And then one song is actually dedicated to Alexis Eddy, track seven, following you. And then, uh, so it's just a lot of de dedications. It really just has to do with like people in my life who have meant a lot to me. And then you know, track three, Free Again, which was the song, the music video that I filmed at uh, Sonoma Valley High School. That song was kind of, you know, overcoming depression and overcut. Like, I don't even want to say depression. That word is just, you know, it's kind of overused. But just I was in a funk in my life where, like, I wasn't motivated. I was just laying in my bed all day, every day, pretty much not putting any work in. And then, like, I went to Coachella, you know, met some awesome people at Coachella uh, it came back and then all of a sudden I was like revitalized and I felt free again. So that's what that song was about was just like going from, I guess, depressed to manic. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. And then it's just, you know, the overall theme is just like what it's like to grow up, get older and mature and realize that you're not as cool as you thought you were. Cause you're never as cool as you thought you were. That's the main <laughs> thing. <laughs> I think also with everybody being stuck at home, I think we're all going through waves of that funk. So your album might be coming out at a really good time. Yeah, I, I hope so. And it's it's so it's just a weird time to release music because like you want people to be playing it when they're hanging out together or when they're in the car together. So um, you don't really know, like when you look at like the amount of streams that you're getting, you're like, well, I don't know if uh, this is more than I'd normally get or if it's less, but uh yeah, it's just a weird time to, to release music, but I hope it, you know, makes people feel less alone when they're just sitting in their room wondering what the hell life is, you know? Yeah. And you mentioned, and I saw it earlier, that you recorded your video at Sonoma Valley High School, which I mm -hmm. thought was pretty cool. Did you have to get special permissions? Did you just kind of guerrilla that's, warfare it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the beauty of the quarantine is like there's actually opportunities to film at places where you couldn't film because like we would have never been able to pull that off at the high school you know you got to clear stuff with the and then like even if we went on a Saturday there would have been teachers there um and there's always that one teacher that's like what are you you're not supposed to be doing this just who follows rules 
to a fault, just way too much. Uh, so when we went there, there was absolutely nobody at the, at the high school. And this is the only time ever where you could go to the high school and literally nobody will be there. So we lucked out uh, being, able to, being able to film there. And um, it was just, I always wanted to do a video at the high school. So I'm really, really grateful that we got to do it. And your videos are all really good quality. I was checking them out on YouTube. And um, do you have a team that you always work with? Do you just say one day, I'm going to make a video of this song and you kind of put it together at that time? Yeah, that's a good question. I have like when I, because I, I live in Los Angeles most of the time and uh, my roommate is a music video director. He's really good. He's done most of my videos. So Well, that's handy. <laughs> oh, I know. It's amazing. Um, so whenever I, you know, It'll be like he I I release a song that he really likes and he's like, I want to shoot this, let's do it, let's figure out a, a a day to shoot it. And then we just we work together really well. The one in Sonoma, uh, one of my friends above average, uh, PJ, super good artist, and he does great videos. I like it was right after I released the album and the song Free Again, people were liking. So I was like, We need a music video to this and we need it ASAP. We need a quick turnaround. So I hit him up. I was like, yo, I need a quick turnaround. What's the budget? What do you charge? I, let's make it happen. So um that's uh so really it's it, it it really comes down to like if it's a quick turnaround, we'll just shoot it one day. Hopefully two days later it's edited. But if it's like this song, we, we have a song, Give Me Time, that took a long, we had to rent a convertible. We went through hell and back to get that video. So certain videos you just knock out, quick turnaround. Certain videos it can take take up up to a month to, re to really produce it. Because when you release something to the public, you know, it's there forever. So you want to make it like the best possible because after you put it out you can't just be like wait just kidding we we have to change a few things it's there for life so um yeah it's uh it's pretty crazy well before i let you go did you want and before i send everybody to go buy your album uh did you want to perform a song for us yeah absolutely i uh so there's this one song that um because we talked about are you the one i wrote this song with my friend in the are you the one house and um, it was the worst day. Every day was horrible, but this day in particular was the worst day. And I, and uh, Matt, and it was the only time that like my friend was able to bring his guitar out because normally it just you, it picks up the sound. But we were we had kind of hit a lull, and it was just me and him in a room. And he brought out a guitar, and then um, he just played this riff, and then I, uh, I uh, he played this riff, and then I. Um, came up with the lyrics right right away and released the song afterwards and it's one of my like it's my second most popular song i've ever i've ever done so it's a cool story of how it came about um so i want to play that song it's called happy place so uh here we go is the audio can you hear the audio okay okay cool take me to my happy place where the rain don't pour I don't want to feel this in my brain no more. Every day gets harder than the day before. But still I keep on smiling till my face gets sore in my happy place. Hey, hey, take me to my happy place. Take me to my happy place. Yeah, yeah, now I'm in my happy place. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, at a pool party, not in the pool. Spend all day on that ass pick, but it ain't right to call you trash. And the reason is because you plastic. Posted with my shirt on. Ain't developed my abs yet, but a nice body. Body don't matter, my personality is my asset, we good. Caught up in a thinking, damn, I want to stay home. Behaving the way I want to in my room, naked alone. And if you've seen us on the end and that you thought that it was blown out, really, we just sat down with our phones out. So take me to my happy place where the rain don't pour. I don't want to feel this in my brain no more. Every day gets harder than the day before. But still I keep on smiling till my face gets sore in my happy place. Hey, hey, take me to my happy place. Take me to my happy place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm in my happy place. Check it out. 
Hey yo, this one's for the bald heads. This one's for the thick thighs. Telling me about your bank account is just telling me about your size. We don't care about what you do. Don't care about who you know. The moment you put on a show, when we show you to the door, yo, I felt so low. Never wanted to be so low. Learn how to be happy by myself. Now I get FOMO, no more. So don't let quick fame entice you. Quit playing like it's high school. Focus on who loves you, not who likes you. Would it be all right, boo? Yeah, had a bad day and you don't know how to face it. Put a filter on it so they don't know that you faking. It's hard to love, but it's easy to keep hating. But now I'm stunting on you because I'm in my table to my happy place where the rain don't pour. I don't want to feel this in my brain no more. Every day gets harder than the day before. But still, I keep on smiling till my face gets sore in my happy place. Yeah, yeah. Take me to my happy place. Take me to my happy place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm in my happy place. I'm with Cat in my happy place. Thank you so much for having me. That was, that was fun. I love it. I'm going to download that song. I listen to it every day. It gave me my happy place. My cheeks hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do it. That one's on my, if you do Spotify, just E-Money Happy Place, you'll find it. Awesome. So um, before you go, give us website, where to find the CDs, all the stuff. Yeah, awesome. So um, my Instagram is at E-Money Does It. Uh, my YouTube is just E-Money Music. So, you know, just E-Money, all one word. You'll You'll find me wherever. And then uh, you could, if you, you know, if you feel charitable and you want to donate to a good cause, then buy my album on iTunes. It's e-money. Everything is fine. And then, um, yeah, on Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, just e-money, all one word. I'm the goofy looking white guy. You'll find me. And uh, yeah, I ho hope you like the music. And if not, then it's, it's all good, baby. It's not for everyone. <laughs> well, I love it. Thank you so much for chatting with us today. Thank you so much, Kat. I, I look forward to staying in touch. Okay, bye-bye. See ya.